Housemark is a 15-year-old game development studio based in Helsinki, Finland. Our passion is to create unique, rewarding and engaging gaming experiences. Now, we have just finished developing our first 2D action platformer called Outland. Our team is excited to tell more about it and its creation process. The initial concept behind the, the game was more like a classic platformer, uh, Indiana Jones type of uh, old school. We just wanted to recreate uh, the 80s adventure platform games. The initial concept, it also had uh, like the feeling of, of, of flashback and, and another world. You say Stranger in a Strange Land. I think that's one of the core things that has stayed in the project from the very beginning. The feeling of being lost somehow. So we added to use that with uh, 2D platformers, there's a, a huge variety of different directions you can take that in. I mean, you have like the more sort of, you know, carefree fun of Mario, you have like the more hardcore action of Contra, you have a bit more exploration and adventure like Super Metroid or Flashback, Another World. It was pretty clear that we had like quite a few influences there from different platformers and shooters, and I think it sort of naturally led to that direction. Just mm -hmm. mentioned the word Ikaruga, and then like, ah! The duality of it, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we wanted the animations to look fluid and realistic, but we didn't want to sacrifice responsiveness for that. And that's a really <laughs> hard thing to do with the controls in this type of game, because at the same time, you need a way to feel the immersion and that you're in control of a real person. But also, like, the bullet patterns, they require really good controls for the player to be able to navigate to these bullet mazes. I just uh, started out with uh, random tests to try to break the bullet system specifically and to see what it then it would actually do. And sometimes that yielded extremely lovely results. The number of different patterns uh, just kept going up during, during development. We started off thinking that 120 different patterns would be more than enough, and then we yeah. doubled that, then we doubled it again. Several times during the project, we actually raised the number of active bullets we can have on the screen. Yeah, things began getting complicated when we having patterns which generate other patterns which generate themselves. Right, right, patterns. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're sort of like nested patterns in the game. All of the levels definitely have their own story, and the bosses of each level, they are pretty much appearing throughout the entire level and they define the world before you actually meet the boss. For example, in the spider level, there's a really interesting story with the entire room that is sort of told in pictures throughout the entire level. Statues and, and murals, glowing, glowing decorations. This is the, like the early version of the second level boss. As you can see in the game, it has changed quite a bit to be less attractive. Like those elements appearing in the mural that you see as the boss door, they appear throughout the entire level. And this enemy is interesting because it has gone the first full circle and it started as a drawing, it ended up as a 3D model and here I've taken a screenshot and made it as a mural into the background of one of the levels. So it's also part of the decoration. So it's growing once again. And the concept charts were really great. You know, the uh, inspiration was, uh, you know, huge uh, that I got from those ancient world that should be enhanced with some kind of different sound design that isn't in any other games right now. Apocalyptic dream world with some kind of ancient history going on and the sounds are something, you know, unique. What I found was that many players did not like to wait at all. They were pretty much willing to uh, damage themselves in order to get uh, a bit forward instead of waiting for them. I mean, this game is so dynamic yeah, that yeah, they true. just 
waiting for something to happen. It's difficult. Yeah. It's physically difficult to stop yourself from moving forward. One of the things I did to determine uh, the time limits on the challenge rooms was to play uh, the control upside down to get the feeling of how hard each jump and each action would be. Speaking of things that came in late in development but turned out pretty well, the uh, secrets. We, we went a bit bananas over that. Like, yeah, <laughs> it started with like five secrets. And then per chapter, like, yeah. Yeah, then it was more like five per level. <laughs> it, it just started, and then <laughs> at the end of the day, it, it ended up being like, pretty much every, uh, behind every corner, there's a secret you might actually find. It's, it's great. A large part of the game in its final form is exploring and just, you know, getting a feel for the environment and unlocking new areas and slowly discovering this land, basically. What we hope that gamers will get out of this. Um, I'd just like to mention that, uh, well, personally, I actually grew up with, uh, well, the Nintendo old school. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest, I felt that those games always had a really profound influence on me. Like they actually managed to, you know, not only entertain me, but actually inspire me to someday do what I did with Outland. And I'm just hoping that, uh, in the same way that we're just sitting here and talking about Flashback and uh, Super Metroid and all the other greats, 20 years after they were released, I just have this faint hope that some people will be referencing Outland in as many years from now and using that as a reference and inspiration for their games.